Hi, this is Tracy from RX Performance. We've got a 2014 Focus ST. And we're going to be doing the RX catch can system and clean side separator install. First thing, we're going to remove the engine cover. This is an inline trans mounted uh, four cylinder. We're going to remove. main air intake air bridge. We're going to bolt off. Good. Take a piece from here. Get up where we can make this clamp loose taking this out. I'm going to set this aside for now. Now this has only got 9,000 miles on it and if it did not we'd also remove the intake manifold and we would perform a manual intake valve cleaning service with a series of stainless brushes and a die grinder and a shot back so we could get the deposits out. We're going to assume there are very few deposits, but we'll probably go in with the uh, boroscope and take a look anyway. So, but what we're doing, we want to come in here and look a little closer. And the little four cylinder EcoBoost only has a clean side inlet. And as you can see in there, you can see that whole stream of oil that's been drawn in. Coming in, see where it's dry here and it's all soaked with oil there, the discoloration. So we're going to be replacing the uh, oil fill cap with a clean side separator. And we're going to reconfigure this setup here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this OEM fitting, our OEM tube here, and then this is going to be our in-boost evacuation source. This is going to be our dirty side. As you can see, it's just full of oil here. And really, that's been going directly into the uh, cold side of the turbo and being pushed into the intercooler and then uh, ingested into the uh, combustion chamber. So we're going to eliminate that. So first thing we're going to do, and uh, if you want to halt it a minute, we've got a bracket that is designed just for the Focus four cylinders. It's going to mount right where the um, rearmost motor mount nut is on the passenger side it's this guy right here so we're going to take an 18 millimeter socket and we're going to pull this nut off. Speed things up a little bit. We'll use the cordless impact. And the goal here is we're going to stop the oil injection. That's creating the intake valve coking. And we're going to improve fuel economy and horsepower a little bit by not having this oil vapor contaminating the intake air charge where we only want air and fuel present. So we're going to start our mount bolt first. This will slide to adjust as you need. I'm going to slide this back into this tight little section here. 
and it looks like I'm going to have to do it with one bolt to begin with. So we can get the can down into place. It's very tight. But this is going to allow us to have all of our fittings on there and still be able to get down at it to drain the can. Now I got ahead of myself a little bit. We want our drain hose here on and we want that drain hose to protrude out the bottom. So we're going to get it back far enough and we'll go up in there and feed that through so it goes into a, a good handy spot so when we drain it you can simply put a drain catch underneath there. So yeah the drain hose is definitely helpful because usually you can get to the bottom of the can with a water bottle or something like that but in this case because it's so tucked in there you're gonna have to get under the car to catch that from the drain hose. But it's, Looks pr looks pretty nice and neat. That came out came out great. All right. So as long as I can get my bolts in here, this is a quarter twenty, so it's going to take a seven sixteenths inch wrench. on it and be able to tighten it up. We want the can straight up and down vertical mounted because gravity plays into this. Quarter 20 bolt with a lock washer. Just snug it up nice. Don't over tighten or you'll break it and that fits into place nicely. We're going to bring that motor mount back down tight. Put the ratchet on it so we can make sure it's tight. Now we're at the can. The can is mounted out of the way it's going to be a little tight for our fittings but we'll go from there so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to take the adapter from our half inch dash eight line which line is this here that we're hooking up now? We're hooking up the dirty side line that goes to the center of the can. So this is going to go on to the center barb on the catch can. And this is going to go spun back behind. Go right over the top here and we're going on to this stock barb that we pulled the OEM line off of. Make sure it's firmly on the barb and this is going to be where our crankcase is evacuating from. So now we're going to take this and use as our secondary suction and this is going to go to one of the fittings on the outer fittings on the catch can and that will be this 90 degree AN fitting we always flow away so our billet check valve and this is a new addition we're going to screw this fitting on And 
we're gonna need a Tony, do you have a wrench that size for me? So it's a one-way check valve. We've got vacuum source on both sides of the center with the center, the incoming from the crankcase. And with the one-way, you've got the vacuum pulling into the can, but that's it. We don't have to worry about anything coming in through the vacuum lines. Tight shot of the can there. Snug this down. After we've got it tightened down, then we can swivel that. Again, don't over tighten, just nice and snug. All right, we're going to be connecting this to this barb right here. So, take another section of the dash eight line, put onto the outlet of the check valve. We're going to pivot this so it goes behind. And this is going to loop around and we're going to connect into this. And these should come pre-cut for you so you don't have to do any cutting. This will loop around, make sure it isn't kinked. We're going to come into this. Now we're going to need an adapter to come from this into this. You want to pause for a second? Yep. Okay, so we're going to make use again of this OEM. We're going to put in our half inch barb here. We're going to slide that into our line. Again, this is our secondary outlet. Make sure this isn't kinked. That's going to slide onto fitting like it did stock. Get this tucked back and for a third time make sure this line is not kinked. Now this is going to take care of our in boost evacuation. When we're in boost we're using the suction from the turbo inlet side and when we're not in boost we're going to be tying into the intake manifold for vacuum during it. So at this point we can put this back on this air bridge and you'll note the little clocking tab right there tighten that clamp oops get the right socket this end back into place. Remember we've got to line up this bolt hole here. this clamp back up. 
and we've taken care of that. Now the last thing we're going to do is take the primary outlet from the can. Again, arrow pointing away from the can. Get our billet check valve here. And we're going to tighten that down as well. Not over tighten it. Just nice and snug. Take an 8 millimeter wrench or 5 sixteenths. And there are two bolts that are holding this block off plate. Careful not to drop the bolts. This is a nice tray up here to set them in. And again, we have oil. Intake manifold just drenched with oil. Just full of it. So, can you see what Mark has the boroscope over there? I'm going to grab the boroscope and go in so we can try to look at the valves and see just how bad, because that's an awful lot of oil and that oil is coming up against gravity so it's probably all draining and pooling on the throttle body and again just for the people that are watching the video you know a lot of people will say on the message boards and things like that that oil being present oil being present in the, the intake is something that happens with every motor not that big a deal why is it why is it such a big deal to have that that oil present there uh, the you don't want anything but air and fuel in your combustion chamber. Oil does not burn well. Oil will disrupt the burn pattern, the flame front, uh, will slow the combustion process, and it results in less energy release per explosive event as well as uh, uh, increased chance of detonation. Now this is a turbocharged engine so that makes it even more critical you don't want detonation that causes knock knock will be picked up by the knock sensors the ecu will then pull timing until that knock disappears so if you're not running at optimum advanced timing you're not getting the fuel economy and power output that you should be so all right you can all right we're going to attempt to snake this boroscope up in intake manifold runner and get down into the intake valve and see if we can get a, a picture of it we are close there we go oh my gosh that intake valve is just coked all up so we're going to stop right here and we're going to, that's horrible for 9,000 miles. This is the stem of the valve and all of that abrasive deposit, every time that va valve cycles up and down, is going to be pulled up into the valve guide and abraded away and wear it out. You also can see further down on the valve itself, you can see how the deposits are building up here and creating an obstruction to the airflow there as well. So, not what we want to see. So from here, well, I just pulled it back out. From here we are going to remove the intake manifold. Um, can you go so we're going to disconnect a few things here. 
we've got a clip that digs into the plastic with the vacuum line. We're just going to simply go in so we can pry that teeth off and move it. We're going to then press the green tab that secures that fitting to the base intake manifold so we can release it. Map sensor and move it out of the way. Give us a little bit more room to get at this. Difficult to get at. Okay, to get at the dirty side outlet from the crankcase, we're going to have to remove the intake manifold. 10 millimeter bolts. There are two, four, five of them. You're going to unplug any of the connections, loosen up the hose clamp that attaches the throttle body to the turbo inlet. You're going to pull back on this red locking tab and then you can unplug, push down and pull the plug off for the throttle body right there. Now as you can see, this is the dirty side. It's going right into the side of the crankcase. A little more light here for you. Beware of falling lights. <laughs> Actually there's plenty of light for the camera to pick this up. Okay. You can see it just fine. Crystal clear. That's your line right there going the dirty side. Yeah, that's the dirty side line going into the crankcase. Has a little oil separator here that uh, helps a little bit as you can see, but not much. That's just soaked. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to tie directly into this. We're going to clean this intake manifold. As you can see there's just oil again everywhere. Intake manifold is soaked and I'm going to pull the throttle body off so we can examine it. And as you can see, oil there. Wow. And we're going to go in here with clean paper towel. And it's just saturated with oil. So we're going to clean that with brake clean so we can get that oil out. I'm well, just going to wipe off the throttle it's body and again. It's just dripping down the side of the throttle body. Yeah, this is only 9,000 miles. This is the most oil I think uh, I've seen so far in any of the videos that we've done. <laughs> I have a new stingray. It's probably a little worse. So. And it's just brake cleaner. Yeah, brake clean's fine. That'll get, get that off. We'll let this dry. We're going to clean out the throttle body as well. Head off any deposits that are already starting there. Okay, now we want to look at the intake valves themselves. And if you can get in there and see, 
That's just horrible. Don't know if you can see that down in there. Let me put the boroscope light in there. That's kind of dark. All kinds of... Nine thousand miles. Direct ejection. Yep. New Ford Focus. Look at that intake valve. Hmm. Look at that. That's just horrendous. Look at that stem. You can't even see the shape of the stem. It's so coked up. 9,000 miles. This starts to cause a misfire, rough idle, hesitation when you come off a throttle from idle. Oh, that's a good shot. Hang on to that for a second. See if Hang we can on. Get on the camera. Look at this. 9,000 miles. Look at that intake valve. can't even tell the shape of the valve look at that stem of the valve every cycle up and down that's pulling that up into the valve guide and wearing that get valve guide out unbelievable so we're gonna go about cleaning these Look at those deposits. Unbelievable. And as small a port size as this is, that has a serious effect on the volumetric efficiency. That's horrible. Look at think what that'd be at twenty, thirty thousand miles. We uh, are going to cap the original clean side since we're going to be replacing that. And push that over that barb from the cam cover on the rear. And that takes care of that so there's nothing leaking. Now, we're going to be going from center of the can here down to the crank KC vac itself and this is okay. clipping this so we'll be able to slide our line over it this can be retained and then put back in with a short piece of hose to splice it if you ever want to go back to sock we'll need the baby to put that in we're going to slide the line up over that tube, get it on there good so it seals. And that is going to be our dirty side. Again, coming from the crankcase, PCV evacuation to the center of the can. All right, and that'll fit underneath the cover. Everything will be out of the way. Go. Okay, for our non-boost evacuation, we're going to use a 3 8 NPT tap on the factory, inside of the factory vacuum barb. That's on the back side of the intake manifold. We're going to cut some threads in there. Don't have to go very far, just so you can get some threads. Okay, clean out any of the debris.
we charging for the uh, intake for Um All right. All right. And that's the installed the installed barb. Yep. Looks factory. Okay, this is going to go on to that barb and then goes to our sec our primary outlet and then we reinstall the intake manifold, plug all the connections back in. So We've got it back together. We threw the one LE clean side separator on there. Almost looks factory. Looks fantastic. All we have to do is connect the hose that comes with it, goes right on that barb, and then we will tap the air box here, add a barb, and nothing but clean, filtered fresh air. There we go. Push that in without cutting any threads. Put our hose onto there. And measure for length. Okay. And we're good. Now, what we're going to do is uh, you want to start it up, Mike? Going to make sure that we have suction here at idle. That'll show us everything's working. It's going to be a closed system. This is where our filtered fresh air is going to come in. This is uh, not a mass airflow equipped engine. This is uh, speed density with only intake air temperature. Feel that? Feel how that suction builds? That shows we're getting proper evacuation, something we did not have before. Alright. That's it. We're done. Alright, let's see a hole right there. 